I don't know if I could read the question that I would put. It looks to me from this diagram that that's what they wanted, right? So the beam is coming in like this, and the question is posed in such a way that this has to go this way. So therefore, if you apply Snell's law to that surface, so it's the indeterminate fraction of the prism times the sign of the angle of incidence in the prism equals the indeterminate fraction of the other medium, which is one, times the sign of the angle of refraction, but what is the angle of refraction outside? No, the angle of refraction. Oh, right. Right. 90 degrees. And the sine of that is one, correct. And I guess your unknown over here is to solve for that angle phi. I mean, alpha. Did I answer your question or, or did I misunderstand the question? I think I originally misunderstood the question and what they were asking for. Uh, does anyone have a, should I go get the textbook or? I have a question. Yeah. Can you please read it for us? It says, light is incident along the normal on phase AB of a glass prism of refractive index 1.52. Find the largest value of the angle alpha can have without any light refracted out of the prism at phase AC if A, the prism is immersed in air, and B, the prism is immersed in water. So you want the largest angle alpha, right? So that the light uh, is internally reflected. Okay, but it just wasn't, it wasn't asking for the angle of refraction of that angle alpha. So, so, it, so notice, whatever this angle is, right? If the, if the light comes, suppose in this case over here, this is the, you know, threshold condition for total internal reflection, right? So the critical angle over here is 90 minus alpha. Well, let's say that angle is 20 degrees. What it means that any angle greater than this, than this 20 degrees, will be totally internally reflected. Any angle less than 20 degrees, some of it is gonna go out into the air. But you want, so notice that if you want total internal reflection over here, right? then the light has to be coming in at angles greater than the critical angle. But the greater the critical angle is, right, the smaller the angle alpha is gonna be, or vice versa. That makes sense. Does it make more sense? Yeah, I just understood what the question was asking. So when you do this problem over here, I guess, let's say you get 49 degrees. That means that what happens if this angle alpha, so um, alpha is 49 degrees, right? So this is 49 degrees. So that will be the, the critical angle. Wait, it would be 90 minus alpha. Uh -huh. So how much is 90 minus 49? 41. 41. So, so this angle over here, which would be the critical angle, would be 41 degrees. Now, if alpha is greater than 49 degrees, let's say it's, um, you know, 50 degrees, then that means that this is going to be 40. And if this angle is 40, then the light is coming in at an angle smaller than the critical angle, and then the light is going to go out. So the maximum that this angle alpha can be is 49 degrees without having light come up. Because if the light comes in over here, let's say, suppose the light comes in over here at 45 degrees, that means that the angle of incidence is going to be 40, 40, uh, 45 degrees, right? Which is more than the 41, so it's going to be internally reflected. So as long as alpha is bigger than the critical angle, it will be totally internally reflected? So alpha is not the critical angle. No, no, it's not. 90 minus alpha. Right. right. So 
So, it, like you said, in, in this case, if it was 45, it's greater than 41, so it will have totally internal. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, any angle larger than that, what was that? Is that the case? Yeah. So, maybe, let me, so let's, for this case over here, let's just say, let me just erase some of this to make it easier. So, that's 49 degrees, right? So, that means that this angle over here of incidence is, let me use a different color, it's going to be 41 degrees, right? So any angle of incidence greater than that is going to be totally internally reflective. So for example, if we have if we have this, I, and this is the normal, right? If the light comes in at an angle, let's say like 55 degrees, if this is 55 degrees, right, then this angle here is going to be what? 35. Then this angle here will be 35 degrees. And that's smaller than the critical angle. This is the critical angle here. And so the light ray is going to come out. But if we draw this again, and you have this, right? You have the normal over here like that, right? And the light comes in at an angle of, let's say, so that alpha is more, let's say, let's make it 45 degrees. So if this is 45 degrees over here, then the critical, I mean, then the, not the critical angle, the angle of incidence is 45 degrees. But 45 degrees is greater than the critical angle. So it'll be reflected, totally internally reflected. None is gonna go out over here. So what's happening over here is that as this angle is increased, increase, 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 the light is going to uh, be internally reflected, internally reflected. But when you go, when you get past a particular value for alpha, so that you know, then the angle of incidence is smaller than this, and the light is going to come out. Yes or no? Yes. So the one thing that I had about this question is, so the index of, of so the index of uh, refraction is um, MP. That's when it hits the plane, the prism, right? Um, so the index of refraction is 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 a number associated with this material, which is the prism, glass prism, and, and the one is associated with this on the medium on the other side of the boundary, which is air. And my, my question is why why are you the most like, uh, index of uh, refraction on the inside one point five two when it's being immersed inside the water? Why? No, it's still it's still the same glass. Oh oh. Okay. It's still the one point five two is is the glass. It has nothing to do with what's around it. Okay. So in the other problem, what you have outside is is water. So now water doesn't have an it's not air. So the index of refraction of water is one point three three. But for the glass, it's still one point five two. I was misinterpreting. I thought the water was inside the prism. No, 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 no. no you, you, so, you, in other words, you take the prism and you just put it in water. But you know, we're assuming that the water doesn't leak into the glass, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you mean, perfect? What do you mean it's perfect? But what is perfect? Yeah, but it's perfect. But Define perfect. Because <laughs> <laughs> are you thinking 60, 60, 60? I don't know if you mean perfect by that or the angle is, the prism is cut at whatever yeah. angle, at yeah, 20 cut. degrees, 70 degrees, 5 degrees, 10 degrees, whatever. I mean, the cusp of it is like cut, like it's crisp. Okay, so the angle is, there's no doubt about the yeah. apex angle then. So you're saying, Consider an angle, a prism like this, I suppose, and you say, oh, this is really a particular angle that we should believe in. Okay, yeah. So it travel, light travels straight through it. Uh, but coming in from, from this from, side? No, from the bottom. Oh, suppose the light. The middle, and then it goes, yeah, and then it goes and it hits the cup. What happens? But if you're if you're, if you're if you're asking me what's the normal to a point, yeah. what's the normal? Well, ha what happens then? 
I mean, you know, if, first of all, this is probably going to have some thickness to it, right? So, so you have the light coming in like this, and now you have it like this, right? So, so this chunk of light over here, well, this light, you know, the angle of incidence is this. And it's going to go from here, so it's going to go like this, because it's going to bend away from it. And for this light over here, you know, I guess it would focus it. So part of it is gonna, part of the beam is going to go through this surface or refract from this surface and the rest is gonna refract from this, but they're both gonna move away from the, from the normal, from this normal and this normal, so it'll tend to focus it. But right at the point, like what's the normal to a point? Mm. We're beaming the other side. What's back? The other side. What about the same, same prism and beaming like from the top? Just, wow. just reverse it. So if it's coming in like this, if the prism is like that, and you shine light like that, coming in like that. So, just so the light that hits this side of here, right, it's gonna bend towards the towards the normal, and for the light coming in over here and over here, right, it's gonna bend towards the normal. Just to be sure when it's fast to slow, it bends towards the normal. Is that how that works? Yes. Got it. And slow to fast is away. Yes. Okay. That's right. That's how I learned it in high school. But then that information is in Snell's law, right? And sine theta, one, one equals n sine theta, two, two, so this is a constant. So what if it goes in a medium, let's say from the prism into the air, what happens to the index of refraction when the light travels from the prism into the air? It's traveling from a medium of 1.52 index of refraction to a medium of one. So the index of refraction gets smaller, right? So the angle increases. So to keep this constant, the angle has to get bigger. So the angle that it will make in the air is going to have to get bigger, which means away from the normal. And vice versa. And of course, traveling from a high industry refraction to a, to a lower industry refraction medium, the light is traveling from slow to fast. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a good connection to be made. Any other questions? So we should do this now?